On July 11th, all prime energy drinks in Canada were recalled by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, the CFIA, their version of the FDA. This followed a health risk assessment that determined that Prime and five other energy drinks were not in compliance with Canadian regulators on the amount of caffeine that should be contained within a can. Just a day earlier, New York Senator and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer had called on the FDA to investigate Prime for their high caffeine content. He argued that although Prime has two lines of drinks, it has not done enough to differentiate them to consumers, yet one of them has more caffeine than is safe for a child's consumption. On top of that, Senator Schumer noted that Prime, unlike Red Bull, advertises primarily to children, making the drink popular amongst kids and teens. So far, Prime headlines have been positive, covering the rise of the brand from the reels of social media, the larger-than-life YouTubers behind it, and the millions of dollars it is already bringing in. This new scrutiny on exactly what the drink contains from politicians and government bodies may be the start of a conversation that may shine a different light on Prime and other influencer-backed performance enhancement products. Before we look at the reasons of why the Canadian Department of Health has recalled Prime, let's first take a look at how we got here. In January of 2022, mega-YouTubers Logan Paul and KSI released Prime Hydration. It was a line of sports drinks, or hydration drinks, as the manufacturer prefers they be referred to. Prime Hydration came in several flavors, and they were keen to emphasize that the drink had no sugar or caffeine, and very low calories. The main ingredients were coconut water and electrolytes. Prime Hydration was coming after the electrolyte drink market, currently dominated by Gatorade and Powerade. Around this time, if you recall, there was a lot of hype surrounding Logan and KSI's boxing match and speculation as to whether they would meet again in the ring. By this time, they had fought twice, in Manchester and Los Angeles. It is therefore no exaggeration to say that their fans were watching their every move, waiting for any kind of news regarding a third encounter. So, on January 4th, hundreds of thousands of their fans tuned in live, as the two influencers got ready to make an important announcement on Instagram. What they got was not a fight announcement but rather a first look at Logan and KSI's new product, Prime Hydration. Guys, we have an announcement. We have a project we want to tell you about. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Uh, I, I, I. We have created our own drink company. Yes! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Prime Hydration. We are officially business partners. We are no longer rivals. Mm -hmm. And we've created a hydration beverage called Prime Hydration to rival some of the biggest companies on Earth. Right out of the gate, Logan announced that the drink would be sold in some of the biggest stores in America, among them Walmart, Target, Kroger, and CVS. This gave it an advantage of very few new products are fortunate to get. Certainly, being backed by two of the most famous faces on the internet helped. Following the initial announcement and subsequent promotions by the two, Prime went totally viral, and not just on the internet. With the eyes and ears of millions of young boys, Prime's launch and marketing could not have gone better. Within months, the drink was available in a few more countries. The launch events in the UK and Australia were like concerts, with thousands of teenagers lining up to see their idols and to have a taste of Prime. A year after launch, Prime reported sales of $250 million, $45 million of which came in January of 2023, pointing to sustained growth. This being a new company, only operating in a few markets and with supply and distribution bottlenecks. That was more than impressive. By contrast, Red Bull made just over $10 billion in 2022. While also impressive, the brand took almost 40 years to get there and operates in nearly all countries on Earth. Up until this time, Prime was not ruffling many regulatory fetters. Then in January of 2023, a year after they introduced Prime Hydration, the YouTube duo launched Prime Energy. Just like their first line of products, Prime Energy has been a commercial success. However, it is this very drink that is now putting them in the regulatory crosshairs. Let's see why. While governments try to promote free enterprise, Prime levels of success comes with its own baggage and scrutiny. Prime Energy Drink is modeled after other energy drinks like Red Bull and Monster. One of the active ingredients in those type of drinks is caffeine. Of course, caffeine has been known for centuries to produce a stimulating effect. 
The increased alertness and elevated mood it provides make it a preferred choice in energy drinks, and Prime is no exception. Caffeine also has some well-understood negative effects, like insomnia, anxiety, and an elevated heart rate. This has made many high-income countries regulate the drug, stipulating how much of it should be put in a can. Prime Energy contains 200 mg of caffeine per 12-ounce can. That's equivalent to 6 cans of Coca-Cola, or nearly 2 Red Bulls, or almost 3 cups of coffee. While that may be legal in the United States, up north, it's a different story. The Canadian Food Inspection Agency has set a legal caffeine limit of 180 mg per can, making Prime not compliant in Canada. But that has not stopped it from being sold in the country. Bottles were found on supermarket shelves in Ontario, Quebec, Alberta, and more. Online sellers and resellers have also mushroomed in the country. In fact, even Walmart Canada was selling Prime on their website, but it was removed as soon as journalists started asking questions. All these have now been recalled, with Canadians urged to report if they find any more in stores. Alongside Prime, five other energy drinks have been recalled, among them Celsius and 5-Hour Energy. On top of the caffeine limit, Prime also broke Canada's bilingual labeling rules, which require both English and French labeling. But neither KSI nor Logan thinks they're doing anything wrong, and like them or hate them, they may have a solid argument. Apparently, Prime has not been launched in Canada, and all Prime products in the country are a result of unauthorized importation from the United States. I mean, it's not hard to imagine that Canada Border Services Agency has bigger fish to fry, rather than confiscate Prime drinks at the point of entry. Food law experts believe it would also be impossible to stop inflows of the US version into Canada, owing to many distributors being oblivious to the rules, or Canadians simply ordering it online from the States. For a drink that has caught the imagination of teenagers, selling out every time there's a new flavor or an event, it's not hard to see thousands of online orders from America entering Canada. But according to the company, there is actually a less caffeinated, Canada-compliant version of Prime Energy that comes in at 140 mg per can. It's unclear whether this is an existing product or a work in progress. While the Canadians may seem harsh in their caffeine limits, they're actually more liberal when it comes to children's consumption. Health Canada recommends a maximum caffeine intake of 2.5 mg per kilogram of body weight per day for children up to the age of 18. That means a child who weighs 30 kg, for example, is allowed up to 75 mg of caffeine per day. The FDA in the United States does not impose limits. But the American Academy of Pediatrics says kids younger than 12 should avoid caffeine altogether. Ironically, coffee can sometimes contain more than 180 mg of caffeine in a single serving. Yet it's not as strictly regulated. Why? It all comes down to how energy drinks are marketed, especially to vulnerable demographics. Trendy, healthy, and performance enhancing, low in calories, sugar-free and vegan, all music to their ears. If Prime hopes to have any staying power and take on the big boys like Red Bull, Monster, and Gatorade, they may have to address these concerns sooner rather than later. They said in a statement that their drinks meet the legal requirements of wherever they're being sold, and their packaging is clear that it is not meant for kids. It remains to be seen whether that will be enough.